View Masters. It's the podcast that we do. View Masters. Talk about movies that we view. View Masters. My friend Eric and me, Joe. View Masters. Hey, let's start the show. Hello. Welcome to the View Masters, episode 208 Night Riders. My name is Joe. My name is Eric. Hello, Eric. Hi, Joe. Did my intro amuse you? It did. <laughs> oh, that's nice. The the uh, extra emphasis on the S at the end of Night Riders really <laughs> well, tickled me. Well, I mean, me. <laughs> I want to make sure there's no confusion. <laughs> well, I because there that. there was at the end of last episode, I was very confused. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. That's you know what I got over it. I figured it out. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, how is your uh, how is your quarantine going? Uh, again, not quarantined. Right. Uh, sorry. Uh, your your social distancing. Uh, 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 I'm I'm not doing that either. No. Okay. That's true. I guess because you still have to go to work, don't you? Uh, yep. I I am essential. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that. You are essential to me. Oh, well, thank you. How's uh, how's confinement with Jenny going? Oh, it's going fine. Oh, that's good. We uh, luckily, when when we crack under the stress, uh, it's at different times. That's good. So yeah, because <laughs> otherwise it would be a lot. Yeah, you haven't uh, you know put a piece of blue tape down the middle of the apartment yet and uh you know this is your side this is my side no we haven't haven't gotten to that point yet oh that's good <laughs> luckily i mean we we have separate offices luckily so we can yeah. you know we we're we don't see each other we're not within each other's line of sight at all times that's good so yeah it's good to have separate spaces yeah do you, do you guys fight over who gets to walk the dog just to leave the house? No. No, no. We've got a pretty set schedule for who walks her, so. Okay. <laughs> uh, it has the the weather here has been very nice though, so when I when I do get to go outside, it hasn't been all bad. That's good. Uh it's been uh, it's been pretty pleasant here the last couple days at least. Nice. Uh, a little stormy, but uh, otherwise uh, pretty pretty warm, really. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I think in like the fifties or sixties today, so yeah, not too bad. Not at all, and of course, uh, as our fearless leader told us, that uh, once it gets hot, uh, mm-hmm. this whole thing is just going to go away. Right? Yeah, no, the the heat will burn it away. Yep, yep is that's like my understanding of how it works. That is uh, science. <laughs> Oh, I don't think that's science, actually. <laughs> I think that might be the opposite of science. Hmm, no, I don't think so. I think that is that's uh, that is legit science. Okay. <laughs> well, agree to disagree, Mr. President. Alrighty. <laughs> Wait, am I the president? You are the president in this scenario, yes! yes. Congratulations. Wow. I, I don't know why you would want to do that, but good for you. <laughs> Well, I couldn't be any worse, could I? That's true. You really couldn't. (laughs) (laughs) Oof. Any hoodle. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Knight Riders. Yes. Knight Riders uh, starring Stephen King. Yeah, what the hell? (laughs) Just shoving his face. Hoagie Man, (laughs) the movie. (laughs) <laughs> that was in in a very strange movie that was the strangest part to me was that stephen king randomly is is an extra in one of the earliest scenes i mean it is he is more than an extra he that's is, true he has lines it is more than a cameo <laughs> they cut back to him frequently <laughs> He has a lot of things to say in this movie. He does. I guess this is this is his first uh, on-screen appearance. Is it? I uh, if I if I am remembering correctly, it's either his first or maybe his second. Oh wow! Uh, on-screen right. appearance. 
Good for him. Yeah, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah. Uh, makes me curious, because uh, uh, this is uh, a movie directed by uh, George A. Romero. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, this movie was followed up by Creepshow, which was right. a collaboration between him and Stephen King. I wonder if that was in the works while this movie was happening, or... Yeah, I, I read that the only reason that Stephen King is in this movie is that he was on set to work on Creepshow with okay. Romero, and I guess Romero was just like, why don't you be in this scene? Alright. <laughs> why don't you eat a sandwich sloppily <laughs> and say a bunch of shit? Yeah, it was uh, not pleasant. It really wasn't. <laughs> I don't like people talking with their mouths full to begin with. Right. <laughs> and then, yeah. Yeah. Real close up on him while he's doing it. Yeah, it was uh, not great. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what did what did you think of the movie aside from the, uh, the <laughs> baffling Stephen King appearance? Uh, so, uh... <laughs> so George Romero has uh, uh, the span of his career he made about 17 movies mm-hmm. uh, four of them I would consider absolutely great and then I would say an additional four are pretty good and then the rest of them are definitely movies <laughs> And this is definitely a movie. I was going to say, this definitely falls into the the great category. (laughs) Oh, oh boy. (laughs) If I never see another motorcycle again in my life, (laughs) I will be more than happy. This movie has put me off of motorcycles, and I was never on motorcycles, so... (laughs) It did a good job. I would, uh... I would agree with the sentiment, but for me, it's going to be uh, knights. Knights yes. wearing armor. Yeah. I, I'm done with that, and was also <laughs> previously never really into that. <laughs> the the combination of the two is also <laughs> baffling. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> this movie is weird. I guess uh, originally it was supposed to be horses. And then one of the producers was like, why don't you do motorcycles instead? (laughs) And so they did motorcycles. If the IMDb trivia is to be believed anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. (laughs) I I don't know if horses would have been better, but... I actually, I think motorcycles was the right way to go for this movie. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I mean, they're really baked into the script. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we would, uh, we would also lose one of the key characters of the movie, the motorcycle mechanic. Right, that's true. What would we have a, a blacksmith putting shoes on horses? I guess, or I guess. a veterinarian. Oh, there you go. Uh, but then, but then, what would Merlin do? <laughs> he he's the human doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, quote unquote, doctor. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so this movie is uh, two and a half hours long. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I had read on Wikipedia that uh, there is a European cut that is about a hundred minutes long. Okay. Um, I don't know if it would have been better if it was shorter, because I still feel that with two and a half hours, there were large chunks of story that just went unexplained, Mm -hmm. or felt like they were just missing. Yeah, I mean, what would you have cut to get it down to a (laughs) hundred minutes? I mean... Other than maybe an hour of motorcycle riding. Yeah, I don't think we needed to see their entire, uh, you know, show. Right. Twice. Uh, twice, yeah. I mean, especially the, the, the first one. <laughs> the, uh, the the first 40 minutes of this movie is right. pretty much their entire performance. 
I mean, it gives you a good feel for what they do. <laughs> because you see all of it. <laughs> and pretty much all they do is ride motorcycles around in a circle. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, you know, the the uh, Stephen King uh, subplots, I, I guess we would get rid of that. So that That's true, yeah. We would lose that. 15 minutes of movie out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> yeah um the uh girlfriend subplots i guess uh could go that yeah i don't know <laughs> given the given the end of the movie <laughs> i don't know why that was there yeah uh so I read the plot summary of this after watching it. Oh, please God, tell me. <laughs> um, so, and and they never explain it in the movie, as far as I know. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe I missed it. <laughs> but uh, Alan, the the uh, suave uh, motorcycle knight, right? Uh, you know basically picks up this girl like within the first 10 minutes of this movie uh and then she sticks around forever uh and then he uh because she's running away from uh, an abusive father and uh not so great mother uh and according to wikipedia the the plot summary of it states that uh, alan uh realizes that uh she is just uh, running away from her troubles and that uh, he is basically just uh, enabling her and that's why he uh, takes her home at the end. <laughs> what? <laughs> but How, uh, there, is, there is literally nothing in the movie that conveys that. Nope, not at all. <laughs> like, like, literally nothing. <laughs> And uh, he also realizes that uh, his one true love is uh, the queen. Right. Uh, which also, prior to th- that revelation, uh, nothing conveys that in the movie either. I don't yeah. think they even interact up until like the last half hour of this movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> so strange yeah (laughs) and like i can see sort of there are there are allusions to king arthur uh sort of throughout the movie very very loose (laughs) references Um, not the motorcycle part not the motorcycle part no (laughs) (laughs) but it but i mean if they had wanted to to make that guy like that guy's lancelot or something Mm -hmm. and he has a relationship with the with the queen um then that then that would make sense sure in the context of this is a parallel to the arthurian story but as it's presented no (laughs) right uh yeah like like at any point in the prior two hours of this movie they could have at least hinted at it yeah really at the very very least had them interact once yeah like just have her put like a a laurel on his his uh jousting stick right the word that i can't remember uh Um, lance is it just lance yeah there you go (laughs) um yeah you know just have her put a put a laurel on it and maybe they have like a knowing look between them and that's all you would need sure to set something up yep that that doesn't happen. That does not happen. No. At all. <laughs> like like the most that we kind of get is that she is uh um I don't want to say wary, but she is uh she she definitely has her doubts about the king mm-hmm. uh in this movie King Billy played by Ed Harris. Right. Uh that she you know, I mean, she just has worried looks at him a lot and that's that's pretty much it that is her role in the movie is to be is to be concerned for for billy yes 
It's, yeah, n- not a lot to work with for her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I thought Ed Harris was, was fine. I was going to say great, but then I was like, no, I didn't really think he was great. I just thought he was fine. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, honestly, everybody was fine. There wasn't anybody in this movie that I was like, they're really bad. No, uh, I, I think Tom Savini is the, the only person for me that really uh, elevates above fine. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, but yes, everyone else is fine. Yeah. <laughs> they made do with what they had. Yeah. Which is a confusing mess. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> like, there's that scene, there's the scene between Billy and Merlin where... I think Billy, like Merlin spouts a whole bunch of, of nonsense, basically. He, he is, uh, our magical Negro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, yikes. Yeah. Well, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a thing. It is a thing. Yeah. Um, but, but I was like, oh, I bet, you know, this stuff, I don't remember anything that he said now, but <laughs> at the time, at the time as he was saying it, I was like, oh, I bet this is stuff that'll that'll play out throughout the rest of the movie and we should i should pay attention to this like it's like it's mulholland drive or something and then nothing (laughs) just absolutely nothing yeah uh that i think that is an apt description for most of everything in this movie yeah just nothing uh, it's nothing yeah (laughs) nothing really happens there's no real stakes these like, these people are following Billy. Yeah. And we don't know why. Like there there's there's mention that he makes of people comparing him to like Jim Jones and Charles Manson <laughs> and and him rejecting that comparison. But I don't well, see Sure, wouldn't you? I yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but like but I, I feel like there's nothing in this movie that's that that sets him up to be even anywhere near like those guys as far as just, you know, charismatic leader, uh, yeah. devout followers type thing goes. Right. He's, he's, yeah, definitely. He's, he is not charismatic. Yeah. No, he's, he's kind of just a grump. Right. Which, uh, maybe, I mean, that's just Ed Harris. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, although I believe Ed Harris has uh, just a slightly bit more of uh, an insanity streak in him. Yeah, I can than see this that. character. Yeah, definitely. Like this character is insane, but Ed Harris is actually slightly more insane in real life. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> and and there's like there's references to him having been like a famous motorcycle daredevil i guess but again we get no information about that beyond that one one little kid wanting his autograph right i i mean yeah how how did he go from that to being the king in this traveling traveling show i I, have no idea i feel like the the thing that you're referencing the uh, the article in a magazine Mm -hmm. uh was uh just about the whole traveling motorcycle renaissance fair oh was it yeah i I think that's all that was about yeah i i thought it was like an old magazine that had an article about him being this this daredevil rider i totally missed that it was about the traveling show no yeah (laughs) that makes even less sense yeah because that's why tom zavini uh then autographs the magazine uh See, I thought I thought that was weird that he was signing a magazine that had nothing to do with him. <laughs> I, I think he was, uh, you know, marginally involved in that. Yeah. Okay, I thought I he mean, was just being an asshole. Well, I mean, he was, but you know, <laughs> there, there was a slight purpose to him being an asshole. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, then that's on me. I, I was confused <laughs> by that part. I mean, you're not entirely wrong, still. <laughs> Uh, cause yeah, it was like his whole thing is that it's, it's, uh, he just wants to do this, uh, traveling motorcycle renaissance thing. 
but uh, he doesn't want to go mainstream with it. Right. Which uh, is bizarre in and of itself. Yeah, like, you, there's there's no... <laughs> I wouldn't be concerned about that, man. <laughs> Like, I don't know what the chances are of that happening. Yeah, this is, uh, even for 1980, pretty niche. <laughs> and now I'm now I'm remembering the, uh... Because Tom Savini's character, Morgan, uh, does decide that he wants to go mainstream. <laughs> and so there's a photo shoot <laughs> of him in... I don't know what he's wearing, like, weird leather belts... Uh, he's wearing the best costume right and he's uh, and he's lounging on the word night rider yep and it's all one word obviously so he is the titular night rider in the movie well he is a night rider right the movie is night riders oh that's right okay sorry yeah <laughs> multiple riders <laughs> how could you forget everyone's on a motorcycle that's true i'm so dumb and wearing armor yeah medieval armor on <laughs> motorcycles everywhere they go yep <laughs> to mcdonald's uh the woods to, to whatever school yep <laughs> These are all things that happen in this movie. <laughs> These, yeah, I really want to talk about the end of this movie. Ah! Just, I have a lot of thoughts. Okay. <laughs> so, don't don't watch this movie. Don't spend two and a half hours watching watching this movie. Just listen to us talk about it, and and you know, know that you have escaped. Yeah. Uh, something. Something. Uh, special I guess <laughs> but so at the end of the movie uh, uh, god what was his name what's Ed Harris, Harris's character's name uh, Billy Billy thank you I keep wanting to call him Davy I don't know why <laughs> Billy uh, gives up his throne uh, Tom Savini Morgan becomes the new king of the traveling show uh, and then uh, Billy, Billy, yeah, Billy yes. <laughs> rides off <laughs> and is followed by another one of the motorcyclists. I did not catch why that guy was was going with him. So okay, let's talk about that guy for a second. Okay, because <laughs> uh, so after the first hour of this movie, where uh, they they do their entire first performance. Uh, they move on to another town, mm -hmm. and uh, part of their show is that they allow locals who have uh, motorcycles to just uh, come on in and fight them. Yeah, in the, in uh, the first in the first show, that includes a bunch of Nazis. Yeah, uh, and in uh, the second part, uh, it's just a bunch of drunk people. Yeah, uh, which may actually makes more sense. Well, yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, there's uh, one uh, Native American fella who shows up and fights the king and uh, then suddenly joins the troop. And uh, we never get a name, he never has any lines, we never get any reasoning. And then, yes, at the end when uh, Billy abdicates the throne, uh, this guy just uh, decides to go with him. Yeah. And, uh, and they never interact. <laughs> see uh, I, I i remembered that that guy was the guy that he fought uh, right right uh i did not remember that guy joining the troop yeah he he just sticks around yeah and so then, like uh... like when when he shows up later i was like oh was he a plant in that previous gang no nope, like he... was he with the troop all along He's, uh, he's like a hobo. He just uh, <laughs> decided, okay, I'm, I'm staying forever now. <laughs> and then uh, shortly before the, uh, the final climactic battle, uh, which uh, I use that term very loosely. Right. Uh, <laughs> you mean the part where everyone rode their motorcycles into each other? Yes, that part. <laughs> For 20 minutes? Uh-huh, yep. Um... Yeah, shortly before that happens, uh, Billy then uh, knights the guy. Okay. 
I missed uh, that part. Yeah, it was uh, at the uh, the river bank where Billy was uh, naked and flagellating himself in front of the guy. Right. And uh, then afterwards, uh, yeah, he he benights him. Okay, I'll I'll be honest with you. Uh, I was playing Yahtzee on my phone for <laughs> some of this movie. You know what? I uh, looked at my phone a lot. I, uh, <laughs> you know, was checking out Twitter, and uh, I I kind of dozed for about ten minutes uh, during the uh, the battle scene at the end. Um. So uh, yeah, you know, this is uh. Boy, this is a uh, not a great movie. <laughs> but yeah, so so he rides off, and and this uh, this guy follows him, uh, goes wherever he goes. He's basically his shadow. Right. Um, but the first place that that Billy goes is to McDonald's. Yeah, uh, where he finds uh, a cop who earlier in the movie had tried to shake down the uh, the traveling show and had beaten up one of his friends. Yeah. Uh, and kept him in jail overnight. And he just kicks the shit out of this guy in the McDonald's. Subsequently destroying the McDonald's. It does destroy the McDonald's. Yeah. To, I, to, I, to great fanfare. To, to great fanfare. And I loved that the cashier was like ringing up all of the damages. <laughs> Which only totaled $63. Yeah, well, I mean, you know... <laughs> Things were a little cheaper in the in the early '80s, and McDonald's is, is cheap to begin with. So that, that's true. That's fair. All right, <laughs> but but that scene, uh, uh, he's he's still wearing his armor basically yeah. while he's uh-huh. doing this. So it's like this night. Imagine being a bystander in this <laughs> McDonald's just eating lunch, and then this guy wearing a suit of armor comes in, assaults a police officer. <laughs> Gets a round of applause and then just leaves. <laughs> it just is so crazy. Imagine the story you would have for the rest of your life, though. You really, it would be an amazing story. You would, yeah. you would dine out at many a McDonald's on that story. Oh yeah. I mean, it also, you're... it also <laughs> reminded me of the end of Superman Two, <laughs> which I enjoyed. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, as bored as I was throughout most of this movie, uh, the uh, after the battle when uh, Billy gives Morgan his crown, and uh, then Morgan crowns his new queen, mm-hmm. uh, I I got a little choked up. I did too. <laughs> I, I, it was when, it was when, uh, when Billy's queen handed over her crown to Morgan to give to his, his new mechanic queen that, like, I was emotional. I don't know why. (laughs) Other than I knew, like, oh, this is an important moment for these people. (laughs) Wow, I can't believe I'm, I'm witnessing this. It's, it's, this is heavy. It was the strangest thing. It, yeah. There's <laughs> nothing normal about this movie. <laughs> there are no normal characters. Uh, just, just, uh, I mean, even the, the regular bystanders. Like, I, I'm guessing, like, the, uh, the girlfriend, uh, Julie, mm-hmm. uh, who, you know, with the abusive father and, and all that. I'm guessing, like, she's supposed to be our in? Yeah. But she accepts everything so readily and so excitedly and becomes so ingrained into everyone that is involved that, uh, like, you can only just look at her and think, what is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I mean, we know she has a rough home life. Well, sure. But, but yeah, she just, she questions nothing. <laughs> She's just like, all right, right on. I'm, I'm, I'm your damsel now. Let's do this. <laughs> I, w- I would almost argue that the only uh, semi-normal person in this movie is the little kid who asked for the autograph because he's just an excited, excited little kid. 
Well, sure. I mean, if I was, uh, you know, a little kid and I didn't know any better, I would probably be excited about motorcycle ride nights. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then the guy at, who thinks he's a king. Right, and then at the end I get a cool sword. Yeah. <laughs> that is that's, that by the way is covered in the king's blood. <laughs> yes it is. I we don't about that. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> no, so so yeah, so after McDonald's uh Billy <laughs> Billy goes to the school. He somehow tracks down the school where this kid goes to school. <laughs> it's a one room schoolhouse. Because it's apparently 1914. <laughs> and and again, he enters uh, with with all of his uh, his knight regalia on and, and interrupts the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. And hands over his sword. But also, when... uh, at, at this point, uh, the, the montage leading up to that leads us to believe that he has been traveling for days. Yes. Yeah. He, he, he never must stops. must be rank. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Uh, aside from you know bathing in in dirty rivers, I don't think any of them ever shower. Yeah, I don't think so either. So yeah, they, they, <laughs> this whole production probably smells pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> but but I will tell you when we saw the schoolhouse, uh, and then we got inside. For some reason, part of me was like. Oh, he's gonna go back to school and get his degree. <laughs> and like I expected it to pan over and there's Billy sitting at a desk. <laughs> like I don't read too good. <laughs> I never got my book learning papers. Your diploma? That's right. Like I figured that wasn't what was gonna happen, but I would have just been absolutely delighted if that was what had happened. <laughs> Alas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, someone uh, someone should give us George Romero some notes. Yes, someone really should have. <laughs> uh, man. Do you think that Stephen King's experience uh, on the set of this movie inspired him to make Maximum Overdrive? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, these guys are just driving around. <laughs> I can make a movie where they do that. Uh, it's quite possible. Between that I and mean, the cocaine. Ray, I was going to mention the cocaine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Who? I mean, oh boy, yeah. So, uh, so, so I, I read something about, uh, you know, the, the sort of basis for this movie was that uh you know george romero saw himself as billy basically okay and that uh it was essentially a movie about him attempting to keep his uh his band of local pittsburgh filmmakers together uh while also being courted by mainstream hollywood oh interesting yeah uh so so this was, you know, apparently a very personal movie for him. Well, uh, I feel bad for ragging on it so much. I mean, I do a little bit, but we're not wrong to, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, uh, there's probably better ways he could have told that story. Yeah. And not via motorcycle riding nights. <laughs> I mean, it was certainly a, a unique way to tell that story. Oh, yeah, I'll give it that for sure. Yeah. I've, I've never seen another movie where with motorcycle riding knights in it. Uh, yeah, me neither. Not that I can think of, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like, almost as a concept, like, this shouldn't be a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Like, like, there's definitely a story in there somewhere. I just don't think this was it. Yeah. At least not in the execution. Yeah, I, I think that I read, uh, again, in IMDb trivia, that his initial cut of this movie was, like, 17 hours. Jesus Christ. Which is insane. That is, <laughs> that's not a movie. 
No. Like, what are you thinking? Wow. So, yeah, the story was probably in there somewhere. Huh. And <laughs> po- he possibly cut the wrong parts then. <laughs> in the 14 and a half hours that he cut. <laughs> Holy God. Yeah. Man, I I mean, not that I want to sit through it again, but I would kind of like to see the 90-minute version. Yeah, I would too, actually, just to see what what has been cut from right. the, the two-and-a-half-hour version. <sighs> Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really wanted to like this movie. Uh, just because, you know, it is, you know, a guy primarily known for, you know, one specific thing mm-hmm. you know attempting to to do something very different yeah uh but unfortunately it was it was not a great attempt <laughs> yeah i i just think it was dull yeah it was I mean, dull and it didn't make any sense so i, I guess that makes it bad yeah it, yeah <laughs> there were there were things that made me laugh in this movie intentionally uh, Probably not. I don't okay. remember. Honestly, I don't remember what any of them were. Um, yeah. yeah. As- aside from the excessively long motorcycle sequences, it held my attention fairly well. Uh, I-, I paused it a lot. Yeah. yeah. I guess I-, I did also, I watched it over two days because I knew it was really long. Uh, yeah. So I had a built-in break. That might have helped me. It possibly. Yeah. So if this was a TV miniseries, it would have been really successful. <laughs> I had, uh, yeah, just, just, yeah, there's so much, I mean, you telling me that his initial cut is 17 hours makes a lot of sense, mm-hmm. uh, simply because there's so much in the movie that doesn't make sense. Yeah. That, uh, you know, that again, like, you know, half of it I had to read, you know, the wikipedia plot summary to understand why certain things happened like the the native american guy it's because he had the emblem of a black crow on his chest and the billy had been having dreams about a black crow right but that never happens well actually it's the very first thing that happens well yeah 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 but beyond that, right? It's like it's never it is, there. There's never a connection drawn for for the viewer that says because I actually couldn't tell what was on that guy's breastplate. Like I knew there was something on there, right? Um, but you know, earlier Billy had said that he he was was fighting a dragon. Mm-hmm. He he says you know out of nowhere at some point earlier when he's ranting, and I was like, is that supposed to be a dragon? Is that you know he's he was saw, sees, uh, sees himself fighting this guy, but no, okay, I didn't realize it was the the crow that he had dr- had drummed about, and yeah, there's no you know it was an hour and a half later that we see that thing, right? So there's really no connective tissue between the two events. Right. Uh, the the only other instance of that is a, a spoiler for a forty year old movie that nobody should really watch. <laughs> uh, is right before he dies, mm-hmm. uh, we see a crow uh, on the highway, and then uh, at the very very end of the movie, we see a crow again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But, but but definitely not enough to you know, yeah, draw the line between all of that to, yeah. together. Um, so uh, yeah, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, uh, boy. Yeah, I, I spent most of it uh, thinking, okay, what other George Romero movies have these people been in? Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's quite a few who were in uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. Uh, and a couple guys who were in uh, Day of the Dead. Yeah. Uh, his wife is uh, in the movie. Is she the mechanic? She is. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, and then uh, Tom Savini, of course, uh, got his start working with George Romero and uh, as a special effects guy. Okay, I didn't know uh, that. Yep. Because, uh, yeah, they all lived in the, the Pittsburgh area, so... 
that's uh that's all their connection there that's really cool yeah uh but uh i mean yeah otherwise it's just uh it's a long movie. It's, it is a long movie. Man. <laughs> Just extended motorcycle sequences. <laughs> like there's probably there's probably like 50 pages of script. And and m- most of it is just they have a motorcycle fight. <laughs> Silently. Yeah. Cut to Stephen King. That's right. <laughs> hey, hoagie man. Oh, this is all... Did he say it was all staged? Yeah. Is that what he was saying? Yep. It's just like wrestling. <laughs> it is just like wrestling. <laughs> uh, uh, at least it was, you know, lighter fare than the stuff that I've been picking <laughs> of late. <laughs> so that was nice. That's true. <laughs> I mean, it do, it does become a real bummer at the end. That's true, but <laughs> also, and this is horrible. It made me laugh. <laughs> I could see that. Like there, there. That's one of the parts that made me laugh was when the runaway motorcycle goes into the crowd <laughs> and yeah, like was... goes off of a ramp, and you think it's gonna land on a baby, <laughs> and then it hits the baby's mother instead. <laughs> like it was just it was so ridiculous and and it i mean it felt really fake to me obviously cuz it was fake well, but sure. yeah it just the the ludicrous nature of it made me laugh a lot <laughs> no that's fair yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, i i i feel like sometimes the the sudden outburst of of vehicular violence like that in a movie can just be comical at times yeah definitely and, and uh you know what uh, i kind of chuckled a little bit uh, at the the very end when yeah uh, ed harris gets hit by a truck right <laughs> right rides right into it yep <laughs> <laughs> no body don't nope. worry no i assume it's in the grill of the truck I would assume so. I mean, his head is probably still in the helmet. Right. We, we did see the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Night Riders. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Uh, for 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 directors who are mostly known for horror and then occasionally do something else, uh, this was definitely one of the low end efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, the the Wes Craven movie starring uh, Meryl Streep was uh, much better than this. Is that which one is that? Uh, Music of the Heart, I believe it's called. Okay, I've I've never heard of that. Yeah, Meryl Streep's like a violin teacher or something similar. Interesting. Yeah, directed by Wes Craven. Nice. All yeah. right. <laughs> hey, Meryl Streep. It's bound to be semi quality, probably. I would imagine so. I mean, I, I saw it once uh, when I was working at the TV station. All right. Yeah. Res- resounding endorsement from Eric. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's definitely not as good as Nightmare on Elm Street, but, you know. Yeah. I, I appreciate when people try things. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I, I, I feel like I've said before, I enjoy a, a failed attempt at something different than a you know, semi-enjoyable, more of the same, if that makes sense. Oh, no, absolutely. You know, like I mentioned, you know, George Romero made four great movies. Uh, three of them are living dead movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when he, you know, basically had to return to those movies, you know, later in his career, you know, some of them were fine, but, you know, at the same time, you know, I, I had to feel, you know, it's like, yeah, that's kind of too bad you know yeah yeah it's like and kevin then, smith making clerks three or whatever right or uh jane silent bob reboot right yeah <laughs> uh the sad thing is uh george, george romero has passed away and his very last movie was possibly not just his worst movie but one of the worst movies i've ever seen oh that's too bad yeah and it was also a living dead movie okay 
Yeah. Survival of the Dead. It's terrible. Don't watch it. <laughs> watch Night Riders first. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a plan. <laughs> that's 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 real bad for that movie. Yeah. If you're gonna watch a bad George Romero movie, go ahead and watch this one. <laughs> Uh, and, and even even uh, I would not recommend anyone watch this. I would even say it's 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 not awful. Yeah, it's it's really not awful. It's just not good. It's it's not two and a half hours worth of watch. No, it, at, at two and a half hours, it should be way more coherent than it actually is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it is not. <laughs> I would imagine the 90 minute version while brisker is probably even less coherent. I couldn't imagine it being more coherent. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's just a recorded voiceover to explain <laughs> like, things. Like Harrison Ford in Blade Runner. Yeah. It's just it's just bored Ed Harris explaining. <laughs> I, I would watch that actually. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, put together a Kickstarter to have Ed Harris uh, add uh, add a uh, a narration. To yes. <laughs> at at him on later. Twitter and see if he's if he's into it. All right. <laughs> Will do. Is Ed Harris on Twitter? It doesn't seem like a thing he'd be on, but who knows? I, I don't imagine he is, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All uh. right. Well, I guess I should should pick something for next week, huh? I, I suppose you should. I'll, I, I guess I have four guesses as to what it might be. Uh, it's Since Music of the Heart, me. starring Meryl Streep. <laughs> Sweet! No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, did, uh, I did put some thought into it ahead of time. I sent you a, a little list of, of contenders. Yep, and uh, I answered it while watching this movie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so two of the movies you'd already seen, so I, I won't want to make you watch those again. Okay, um, yeah, I, w- I totally would have, but all right, fair. Well, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. But, okay, uh, but for now, let's let's watch something that's new to both of us. Alrighty, uh, let's watch the Sisters Brothers. <laughs> it is a western starring uh, John C. Riley and Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is in it as well. <clears throat> uh, Alrighty. And uh, I I know very little about it beyond uh, what I've just said. <laughs> uh, and uh, I have heard good things about it from from people on the internet who uh, I generally trust their uh, opinions on movies. So, and I did look it up on Rotten Tomatoes just to be safe, and it has a pretty good score there as well. Right. Well, I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes because those are all rigged. That's true. But, uh... They are. <laughs> but, I mean, this isn't a Marvel or a DC movie, so I think it's oh, okay. Alright. <laughs> uh, I, I will confess that uh, I remember seeing the trailer for it, and I had wanted to see it. And I saw that it was on Hulu. Mm-hmm. And I started watching it one day, and I made it about ten minutes in and stopped. Oh, no. Uh, but, I, you know... Possibly just wasn't in the mood. Yeah. Uh, but I will certainly give it a, a another go again here. So okay. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, that's why I did not say you know no to that one. You gotcha. Know, you texted me about it. Okay. Uh, so so yes, the sisters brothers. Right. I mean, it's a stupid title. Uh huh. <laughs> I I I don't know if it's a comedy. I, th- I, I feel like with that title, it probably has to have at least comedic elements to it. I, I believe it has comedic elements, yes. Yeah, but, so. but possibly not a straight comedy, though. Okay. I, I was but. I was looking for something that wasn't <laughs> the torture report or <laughs> the seventh seal, so... Sure, sure. <laughs> no uh, no Requiem for a Dream or... Nah. Uh, what, what's that movie with uh, Bjork? Uh... <laughs> There's that, a movie uh, with Bjork? Yeah, the, the, our, our friend Kathleen, it's one of her favorite movies. Uh, but it's like, it's Icelandic and just just depressing as fuck. I have, I have no idea, I'll have to look this up. Yeah, uh, don't pick that one once you uh, do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least not yet. I don't know, it looks really interesting. 
<laughs> well, we'll stick with the sisters brothers. First. Excellent. All righty. Sounds and, good. Uh, and yeah, that that is available on Hulu. So so anyone yes. who uh, wants to listen along uh, or, or wants to watch along and then join us for the conversation, that's that's where you'll find it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we will see you next week then. Indeedy. All Have right. Good night. You too. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the View Masters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on the View Masters. Yeah.